Bless God, right now I'd like to speak about a few different proverbs and go through some of the implications from the verses and to give a framework on the creation of God and how verses like this give us a standard in life and how we seek after knowledge and what God is seeking after and things like that. I remember years back now, it's probably been about four years, maybe even five. There was this wicked man who sent me this file called the Doctrines of Grace. And it was many pages, I forget how many. But it was a report or whatever you would call it of all these verses that prove Calvinism. And I was thinking to myself, this is going to be very difficult to reply to every single verse. Although it was possible, of course, because Calvinism is opposite to what the Bible teaches in all five points of tulip. So I ended up trying to talk to him and his teacher and all this, but there are answers to the verses that they would prove text and I've always found it to be the Lord watering Myself, when I try to water out in the field. And I know I've said it before, there are some verses and some uses of scriptures and certain doctrines that is entirely absurd and may not be worthy of an answer. However, Jesus did have to explain things to sinners and he did it for their good. And someone could get saved, so it takes patience, it takes long suffering, it takes charity. So I'm going to bring up three verses here in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 19, 21, 20, 24, and 21, verse 1. And I'm going to be referencing different places in the Bible and paraphrasing the verses okay and you can go back and check them if you desire now I'd like to start at Proverbs 20 24 and this verse talks about man's goings are of the Lord how then can a man understand his own way 
So from a Calvinist perspective, basically you're totally depraved. Okay, and what you do is God-ordained, whether it's a righteous act or a sinful act. Okay, and they have their fancy terms in the cult, and this is real Calvinism, all right? Not the type of Calvinist that just likes the Paul Washer video, but then backs down when he's asked for his consistent Calvinism. This is real Calvinism. You know, that God ordains the sin, okay? And you're totally depraved. All right, now if you take this verse, and this is the only verse you're giving to someone that is not knowledgeable of the Bible, they might say, well, okay, based on your total depravity, this verse could harmonize to that. Now, for many other places in the Bible, we know that's just not true. And, in fact, any time you see in the Bible that God gives a commandment, it implies free will, because God would not give commandments and not judge according to whether you keep or break them if you cannot indeed keep or break them by your own volition and your own will, all right? So right there, it's just common sense. Now, I've had a Calvinist in the past tell me, I'm not telling you it makes common sense. So they at least were honest about that and said, well, we're not telling you it makes common sense. All right, well, hey, if things don't make common sense, you can say whatever you want. And there really is no standard, okay? Now, what does the proverb actually mean? All right. And I think there's a good teaching that could be gathered. And I'd like to go through this first to start with. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, the Apostle Paul teaches that in God paraphrasing we live and move and have our being okay so we also learn from the gospel of John that Jesus is the true light which lights every man that comes into the world okay so in God we have life all right Man in and of himself is not evil, okay? He's not totally depraved. But man cannot go a different way than his maker and have real knowledge and have real understanding. He'll have a false knowledge. He'll have a false wisdom. He'll be in sin. And that's why sin is so damning, okay? Because it's the exact opposite of how you were created, all right? Now, we see this even in Daniel 5, okay, that the rebuke is given to the heathen that in a simple way if it wasn't for God in whom you have breath you know and now you have not glorified God so if it were Calvinism Basically, it's just one of those things that, well, God's not allowing you to be righteous. Now he's blaming you. It's silly, you know, it's just foolish. 
that's not how the prophet understood it. He's blaming the heathen king. Okay. And going back to Acts 17, God commands all men everywhere to repent. This type of ignorance is not okay. You need to repent. And right there, those two places show that. How can man understand his own way then? Well, if he goes with God, he will. Because it says also in the Proverbs in chapter 14, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand their way. Okay. But then the latter half of the verse, it's the sinner that is the one that is going to be destroyed, is judged. Okay. Who falls. Okay. But it's the wisdom of the prudent is to understand. Okay, so we can understand our way. If we're following God and we have wisdom and we have prudence, we understand our way. So the proverb in 2024 is teaching creation. It's teaching God makes good. If you follow good, you're of God. If you go off on your own thoughts, in that sense, it's not of God. Okay. And we see this in Jeremiah 10. Okay, so that's real humility. That you're asking God to correct you. God to guide you, in which case you will do righteousness. Okay. Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God, the power of God. He's made unto us these things. If you are redeemed, if you are a past sinner, you chose to be a sinner, and now you're choosing not to be. And you're going through Christ to be forgiven, but also to follow Jesus because Jesus teaches about the worship of the Father that the Father seeks those that would worship Him in spirit and truth. Why would the Father seek something that He must force? And if He does indeed speak in such an awkward manner to man, if he does actually truly seek this worship, why does he not force everyone to worship in spirit and truth? So Calvinism silly, okay? And I was speaking about John chapter 4. Now, the next problem you could have is the Arminian problem where the Arminians will teach a born sinner, not necessarily total depravity. However, they believe without the cross, you can't do the right thing. And that's making it maybe simple, or maybe to them it's oversimplified. However, it's not the correct grace, okay? The correct grace is the one that allows Jesus to live without sinning. And grow in grace. Okay. Grace is not something that just appears in the Bible because of sin. Okay. Grace is taught to us because of man's sins in some cases. And probably in most. But in the case of Jesus, it's not true. He never sinned and he grew in grace. Okay. And that's why we see in Proverbs 12. Okay. Is the good man. Okay, he finds the favor. All right. But the devices of the wicked. Okay. So it's anything wicked is contrary to grace. Okay. And you cannot have grace and lasciviousness at the same time and be saved.
so I could also bring up Psalm 37 and you know it's the steps of a good man okay are ordered by God all right so those of us that are saints we do understand our way because it is of God okay those that are sinners are not of God and it's not God's fault it's not God ordaining or determining you to wrath okay he will take vengeance on you but it was not his determination now going to Proverbs 19 21 there are many devices in a man's heart and nevertheless the counsel of the Lord that shall stand I believe more so this is spoken of in God whether he will pluck down or give a space to repent we see this in Isaiah 14 in sayings about the Assyrian and no matter what some heathen says they may or may not do and the devices in their heart what God will do is what God will do I think more so that's what it's about you could look at it different ways I mean we have in Proverbs 16 1 which could be another text that the Calvinist might prove text but also in the ninth verse it says a man's heart deviseth his way and the Lord directs his steps so that would be a more positive outlook that a man would choose God and the steps of a good man are ordered by God and if you do any sin you're not good so you don't meet those criteria We have different things in the scriptures where a man of God is crying out to God to teach me your ways. Okay. We have God exhorting, my son, give me your heart. Okay. I spoke about the worship of the Father. Okay. In spirit and truth. And in Proverbs 3, the exhortation is to put these things on your heart okay and let not truth and mercy and I'm paraphrasing forsake you so basically the onus is on you to do it and then once you do it you'll be led so God is giving the truth you cannot make up the truth okay you're created by God you're made with fear and wonder okay the fear of the Lord is the beginning of these things, knowledge and wisdom. Okay. We see in Proverbs 3 how God created with these principles. And this is the principal thing. So when you put these things on your heart, okay, you're walking according to God. It's God that is glorified. Okay. But it is a choice that you must make. Because God does not look for vainglory. Okay. He seeks such that will worship him. Okay. And that would go maybe into my next one, which was the third one I initially brought up, was Proverbs 21, verse 1. And... The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Now, this does not mean every king. All right, because there were some kings that were surely not after God's heart and they were blamed. Okay. I believe this to be a positive 
scripture. There are scriptures that may sound general or broad, but they are about positive things. Jesus talks about the resurrection of the dead. And in one context, it's about the resurrection of the just, not the resurrection of the unjust. But the context implies that he's speaking of something good. Okay. The resurrection of the dead can be just general, can comprise of both just and unjust, but in that context, he's speaking of the just. Okay. And that's in the Gospel of Luke. Now, in Proverbs 21, 1, again, we see different Proverbs. You know, my son, give me your heart. Okay. So if your heart is with God, okay, at the hand of the Lord, you'll be turned the right way and follow the will of God for your life. But what happens in different scriptures where you read that these people have removed their hearts from me and their fear of me is taught by the precepts of men. What do you do with those scriptures? Who caused that problem? If Proverbs 21 1 is just about any king, and the doctrine of Calvinism is just about any person in general, really, anyway, God causes people to have a removed heart. So God causes people to be saved and be unsaved. Okay. Which Calvinism does not allow. There might be some dispensational Calvinists, but haven't really seen too much of it. And I have not seen anyone say that in Calvinism. However, what does that mean? They've removed their heart from me. How does that work in Calvinism without just coming out and saying it? which they typically don't want to do. So we know that's still conditional. Okay. You got to bind these things up on your heart. Okay. It's not a one and done thing. You need to have the humility of the prophet in Jeremiah 10. Okay. And... We see this also with Peter in Galatians 2. Paul was stood into his face and he was not walking according to the truth of the gospel. So this is a man who was obviously full of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. And then years later, he was not walking according to the truth of the gospel. Whose fault was it? Well, it can't be God's. So Peter used his free will to depart from God. Okay. So these were the scriptures I wanted to talk about that these are glorious truths out of the Bible. We see the creation of God and how it's used to teach against idols and to teach repentance in Acts 17. We see that God allowing you to breathe should move you to glorify God. And when you do not, you are rebuked. From Daniel 5, we see a man who was a prophet who had the word in him as a fire who leaned on God in Jeremiah 10. We see backsliders departing from God. But we see what God is seeking after and the type of worship he's looking for, that it's in spirit and in truth. And the bottom line is it is a choice. And if it is God who created you good and with light, it requires you to use the good, do the good, go with the light, walk in the light. It is God. Okay. 
and all glory goes to God. So all we see is a bunch of sinners who, instead of repenting of their sins and choosing to do so, they go for these doctrines of men and they do it because they want their sins. And there's various different doctrines of men and they can pick between one or the other. And Calvinism is just a more heady doctrine, more systematic, and that's how it gets people. And they may use some of these verses, but then all the countless of other verses, they got no answer for it. It's hard for someone who's creating God's image to be so foolish. So that's why they have to be brainwashed in a lot of cases. They have to talk around things. They have to be, you know, immature. Because what else are they going to do? Well, if they had the other side, they would repent and follow the God of the Bible. So praise God.